I had my hair in like these really sad braids earlier. I'm trying to learn how to cornrow. It's not going well. I'm trying to learn a lot of things. Like I'm also trying to take care of my hair. I don't know if anybody else is dealing with this, but it's been a really tough time lately. So I'm sure a lot of people have been feeling anxious, but please let me know if you have been experiencing hair loss because I have definitely been losing and shedding a lot more hair than usual. Okay, see, look at this though. I looked it up and there apparently are a bunch of people who have been losing hair in quarantine. I read that it may be a mixture of like anxiety and the stress of everything going on and then it's also our diets have changed and then also um, vitamin D, like we're getting way less vitamin D. So I've, I've, I'm taking supplements, but um, still, still a lot of hair loss. Every single time I clear out my hair, by the way, um, I don't know if that's Creole. My mom's from Belize and she speaks Creole. We say clear out your hair. I don't know. Please, if anybody else says that, let me know. Every time I clear out my hair, I get, it's wads, but it's not even just like the fact that it's so large. It's that it's like long pieces of hair. It's not like just breaking off halfway. It's definitely, I don't even know if it's from the root because I can't remember ever seeing like those little white bulbs. I don't know if you're supposed to see that all the time. I guess this is a good time to bring up that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing and like actually that's why I'm doing this video because I have no idea what to do with my hair and I am realizing that I like I haven't stopped figuring this out I actually know very little and I still I like I don't do deep treatments I don't do um, protein treatments I don't do pre poos I don't I really don't do anything and I feel really insecure to say this but I realize like I have to learn so much when it comes to taking care of myself and maybe it goes hand in hand with where I am with my with my mental health but I have not been taking care of myself with all this time alone to think about life and the universe and everything in between I've realized like taking care of myself is the number one priority in relation to all of the other goals that I have because I am I keep saying like coming out of this depressive episode but in reality it's been like this roller coaster of a ride so I don't really know if it's out per se it's more like through I guess but as I'm going through this roller coaster ride of depression within the last few years on top of everything <laughs> going on in the world I'm realizing that taking care of myself will help me have a stronger foundation and will help me be a stronger person so that I can get through all these other things and not even just like survive through things but then also just like thrive and then be joyous and celebrate life and get to that point like duh taking care of yourself is important but I guess like as a person who is currently depressed it clicks now and I'm gonna I'm like really putting all my energy to it I feel like there's this immense pressure to be productive and stay I don't know like on track or like to keep my cool within this like wild ass time but in reality the most important thing I can do is like get through it so that's what I've been doing and trying not to like have any expectations for myself outside of just surviving this I think I, it's important to say that I'm very fortunate to have that be my number one priority because there's other people who can't prioritize that. So all of that is to say I'm going to start pre-pooing. <laughs> this is going to be life for a while. So I think it's important to try to adapt myself to this life as best as possible. I kind of settled on self-sufficiency and realizing that the more that I can do and create and make and get rid of on my own, the better. So, you know, while I have the time, let me learn as many skills and trades, I guess, as possible. So doing my own hair, doing my own nails, doing my eyebrows myself, um, making my own clothes, like all of that stuff. I want to learn it all. So I cut my own hair and that is why this mess exists. Sometimes it just feels really dry and I have those, what do they call them, like fairy, fairy balls? 
they call them something when your hair knots fairy knots fairy knots yeah I have fairy knots and so I gotta get rid of this stuff so um without further ado I guess now I will part my hair so that I can put this aloe vera in Okay, my ends feel really soft. My hair was like a little damp when I put it away and now it's pretty much uh, soaked up all that moisture. I'm also new to shampooing my hair in sections. I used to just shampoo my hair like just raw, like all out. But I realized towards the back here, it felt like there was still product buildup that I wasn't fully getting. So I started learning to like section off my hair better. I feel a little insecure to talk so openly about what I don't know about my own hair. There's this shame because I should know my hair and it shouldn't look like this. And I have all these expectations for where I should be at in regards to my relationship with my hair. There's so many logical reasons as to why me and people like me don't fully understand our own hair. Let me just get that off my chest. This is Remy. He's trying to come into the room, so if you hear him, if you hear a little kitten, that this is him. Oh my god. Why didn't you just ask? What's your plan? Oh my god, I'm scared. Remy, I'm scared. Remy, get down. Oh, okay. That didn't hurt too bad. Oh, he's so like cute, but annoying. Yeah, like I was saying, I feel embarrassed to admit that I don't know my own hair, but it makes sense. There's so many like reasons as to why. I'm just gonna leave that there and hopefully not have to be ashamed of not knowing my hair because this is the journey I'm sharing. 
I'm sharing the learning. So yeah, my hair looks like a mess. Cause like you can see, this is so uneven. Look at that. The shape is all off. Overall, it's healthy. I just need to chop the ends. <laughs> Back to what we were doing. This is my hair after the pre-poo, um, the aloe vera pre-poo. It feels so nice and soft. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hair. I'll see y'all later. So, my hair, let's see. Ooh, it feels so good. It feels so soft. It really feels so incredible. While I put the shampoo in, it felt so luxurious and so sh so soft. My big problem lately has been that like all of this is usually really dry and it just is like a cloud. There's no definition. Down here, there is some curl. But yeah, right here, it's all just like fluff. It's like that, just all fluff. I figure maybe that's like the split ends and the parts that need to be cut. I don't know anything about hair, so. But my hair is really soft right now. So I really like that aloe vera pre-poo. I am definitely going to incorporate that into my regular routine because it's a really affordable addition. But I don't feel that comfortable going out in quarantine still. So I don't like the idea of going out every single week for an aloe vera leaf. So I think maybe in the future it would be cool to own you know, a planted aloe vera leaf. There will be a future video where I will be planting my own aloe vera and using it for different beauty routines once I figure out how to take care of myself. Taking care of myself and my body and my mental health and just like really focusing on self-care is a new journey for me. It's a whole new thing. So even simple things like this, like I'm really embarrassed to say it because there's so much shame and in, in, I think there's shame, like it's not feminine to not take care of yourself. And I think that's what my like weird thing is about it. It's like so shameful for me to say like, yeah, there was a time when, well, there was a time when like I couldn't wash my face and there's a time when I couldn't like eat right and it's okay to be emotional it's okay to be emotional i think it's connected to femininity for me in a way um i i feel like there's so much shame around not being able to take care of myself i think it's like something connected with grooming maybe this is a reach but maybe not but i'm sure it has something to do with being black too because i feel like in our culture it's very important to present clean so I have like so much internalized like shit with me not being able to take care of myself, but I'm really glad and relieved to be in a place where I can do it now. I have a feeling me and aloe vera, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship.
Hey y'all, it's like two days later and I'm here at my local plant nursery because I figured I definitely want to incorporate more aloe vera into my beauty routines, but I don't like the idea of heading to a grocery store every week for a $2 leaf. So I will be planting my own aloe vera. I'm here to pick up a plant. They're about $40 here and then hopefully I can propagate it and have a bunch of my own plants and really have some good aloe vera routines. So let's go pick a plant. I'm thinking about either getting this one, which looks really good, or maybe this guy over here. Yeah, actually this, this one looks healthier. Yeah. Okay. He looks nice. Let's get it. Ooh, that's, that's $39, $40 for this guy. That's kind of expensive. I think it's because it's big. Like this is already ready to use. I could cut one of those off and use it for a lot of things already. So maybe I'm gonna just, I don't know anything, but I'm just gonna say that that's why this is $40. This is the plant we've chosen. Careful. The beginning of your journey home, pal. Uh, make sure to like my video if you've enjoyed this. Drop a comment down below, because that helps so much. But the best thing you can do for me is subscribe, because once I get a thousand of y'all, I can start making money off my content. So please subscribe.